so hello good evening students so i hope you all are well so myself shagat mitro that you know very well so we were studying the chapter 2 components of food so last day um, i have told about the activity 4 taste of fat how we can taste fat so now uh, today we will learn about lot of things from this chapter first of all you can see here I have written here a few question and answer and which are very much important from this chapter. So first we will start from why should roughage be included in our daily diet. So actually you know so the it is also the part of component of food. So roughage is also a very essential part of food. So we will learn here how much important it is in our daily diet so roughage should be included in our daily diet because you have to know the reasons why first it helps in digestion that you know to digest our food so actually for digestion means whenever you will eat lot of food so it is required for it is also required to digest so it will help basically in your digestion it prevents constipation so I have put one underline here because about this topic constipation will learn next so it prevents basically constipation third it helps our body to get rid of undigested food so in your body if there is undigested food so it will help to get rid of from your body next it regulates bowel movement so again i put one underline so you will get to know about this uh, term what is called bowel movement so and helps food to pass down by elementary canal properly so it will also help to pass the food pass down the food basically by elementary canal you know in your body there is elementary canal and it will help to pass the food by the elementary canal properly and it will also regulate the bowel movement of food now already mentioned over here what is called constipation means already mentioned over here the term constipation so now what is called constipation actually it is a symptom it is not a disease so this thing you have to keep in your mind it is a symptom not a disease so it can be it can be caused by poor diet so poor diet means if you eat at a time a lot of food so and it will be basically junk food then you will be in problem so it is caused by poor diet lack of exercise so already you know in your school also you are doing that meditation every day and exercise also so at your home nowadays in quarantine days on lockdown days you have to do the physical exercise properly so if there is lack of exercise if you eat means your diet is a poor diet and loss of body salts so you have to get properly the salts also in your body every day so if there is loss of body salts and many more factors are there for this constipation so this is called constipation now one more topic i've told about that bowel movement so what is this bowel movement let's see actually bowel movement it is the last stop in the movement of food it is the last stop in the movement of food through your digestive tract that you know you have the digestive tract in your last class five you know about the digestive system you have drawn also that so there from there you have you will get the idea about the digestive tract so it is the last stop you last stoppage you can say like bus stoppage so like last stoppage in the movement of food through your digestive tract your stool passes out of your body through the rectum and anus so your stool passes out of your body through the rectum and anus so this is the main thing so in the digestive system you have 
marked also what is the rectum you have labeled also there what is the rectum and what is the anus so it is mentioned over here also your stool passes out of your body through the rectum and anus that you know so this type of movement of food through the digestive tract it is called the bowel movement now we will go to the next topic write the importance of water in your body so you know water has lot of importance so you have to know about the importance of water in our body or in your body so let's see importance of water in our body are as follows first it helps in digestion so like uh, already mentioned that in the roughage that roughage also helps in digestion so this water is also water is also helps in your digestion common function for these two things next it helps to transport food materials within the body so it will also transport the food materials within the body it is another major function so whatever the foods you will eat so it will transport those materials within the body from one place to another place next it regulates body temperature so if you will not drink water properly or sufficient amount then your body temperature may fluctuate so it will if you will uh, take adequate amount of water every day so it, that means it will regulate your body temperature so next point it helps the formation of urine and feces so you know very well what are these things urine and feces so it helps the formation of urine and feces so this is a very natural thing next topic is, means point is it helps to eliminate extra water from the body in the form of sweat and urine so whatever the if you will take or drink extra amount of water then it will also help to remove that water from your body or eliminate that water from your body in the form of sweat and urine next point is that it is an essential part of blood and digestive juice so that you know that digestive juices are secreted from the glands to digest the food whatever you are taking so it is an essential part of blood very much essential part of blood in the blood there are two parts already mentioned i hope in the previous class so the blood there are two parts one is um, that watery part and another one is uh, that plates or like that so corpuscles are there uh, white blood corpuscle red blood corpuscle so platelets are there so um, uh, this is one type of part and another is watery part so water is also present in the blood and digestive juice also formed by the water so these are the major functions or importance of water so our next topic is what is balanced diet or defined balanced diet so balanced diet about this you have to know also the diet which contains adequate amount of all the nutrients such as carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals is called a balanced diet so in the diet which contains all the amount of nutrients that you know these are called the nutrients of food carbohydrate protein fat vitamin and minerals so if in a food item all the things not only a particular food item whatever the food items you are taking in a day so in that in or in those food items you have to get all these type of nutrients so in your breakfast it may be in your breakfast it may be in your lunch in your dinner or uh, whatever the food items you are taking every day so in a particular day whatever the food items you are taking so overall these uh, nutrients have to be present in those food so then your balanced means your diet should be balanced diet a balanced diet also contains sufficient amount of water and roughage so in that 
in that balanced diet you can also include the sufficient amount of water as well as the roughage so this is called balanced diet now our next topic is what do you mean by nutrients what do you mean by nutrients now already you know about this so just as a question answer i'm saying some components contained by ingredients that are needed by our body the components are also called the nutrients which is very much um, required in your body or in our body these components are called the nutrients the components are very much required in your body so these are called the nutrients like you can say protein carbohydrate fat etc you know about this already mentioned earlier now one more important topic you have to know what is called complete food what is called complete food basically the food contains protein fat carbohydrates all known vitamins that you know various minerals and all the food ingredients considered essential for sustaining life and maintaining the health actually in a particular food item if all the nutrients will be present like protein fat carbohydrate all the types of vitamins various types of minerals then you can say that particular food item is a complete food so if all the food ingredients considered essential means this type of uh, complete foods are essential for sustaining life and maintaining your health so like i am giving one example like milk milk is a complete food so very much important thing you have to keep in your mind so it may come in your exam that give one example and which is very common that you know that as an example of complete food so you can give the example as milk so after this question answer about these related topics few more videos may be added with this video important videos uh, like you can uh, see in your smart classes but nowadays smart classes you can't see so in my video i will also include few more videos by seeing those videos you can get more and more better ideas so as a question answer you can digest it and Uh, the videos from there you will get more ideas so i hope then you can understand all the topics properly so up to this today students so stay safe stay healthy at your home and um, wait for my next class okay thank you our digestive system is made up of a series of organs that allows our body to get the nutrients and energy it needs from the food we eat digestion starts in the mouth where chewing and saliva breaks down food so it is more easily processed by your body once you swallow the food enters the esophagus which is a muscular tube that connects the pharynx or throat to the stomach the esophagus contracts as it moves food into the stomach A valve called the lower esophageal sphincter or LES is located just before the opening to the stomach. This valve opens to let food pass into the stomach from the esophagus and it prevents food from moving back up into the esophagus from the stomach. Next is the stomach, an organ with strong muscular walls. It holds the food and mixes it with acid and enzymes that continue to break the food down into a liquid or paste. Almost 20 feet long, the small intestine, also called the small bowel, is the workhorse of the digestive system. It will continue to break down food with enzymes released by the pancreas and bile released from the liver. It is made up of three segments: the duodenum, which continues the breakdown of food, and the jejunum and ileum, which are mainly responsible for the absorption of nutrients. Aiding the digestive process is the pancreas. Among its other functions, the pancreas helps digestion by producing digestive enzymes and secreting them into the duodenum, the first segment of the small intestine. These enzymes break down protein, fats, and carbohydrates. The liver is another organ with many functions. 
Its main responsibilities in the digestive process are to make and secrete bile and to process and purify the blood, which contains newly absorbed nutrients that are coming from the small intestine. Bile has two main purposes, to help absorb fats and to carry waste from the liver that cannot pass through the kidneys. Bile made in the liver travels to the small intestine through bile ducts. If the bile isn't needed immediately, it is stored in the gallbladder, which is a pear-shaped reservoir located just under the liver. The gallbladder sends this stored bile into the small intestine to aid in the digestion of food. Next along the journey is the colon, or large intestine. It is a five to seven foot long muscular tube that connects the small intestine to the rectum and is responsible for processing waste so that defecation is easy and convenient. The rectum is an eight inch chamber that connects the colon to the anus. The rectum receives stool from the colon, sends signals to the brain if there is stool to be evacuated, and holds stool until evacuation can happen. The last part of the digestive tract, the anus, consists of pelvic floor muscles and two anal sphincters, internal and external. Together, their jobs are to detect contents in the rectum, determine whether the contents are liquid, gas, or solid, and then control when stool should or shouldn't be excreted from the body. It's useful to understand the digestive system and the role it plays in your overall health and well-being. Knowing where to go when conditions of the digestive system affect your health and well-being is just as important. The University of Michigan Health System is home to one of the largest digestive health and liver disease programs in the country, providing prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of diseases involving the gastrointestinal tract and liver.